Final comment for the semester. If there's an IHD question on your final, it's going to be a bonus question. Even if it doesn't say bonus here, it will be a bonus. How do you start an IHD question? Well, you need the formula for a saturated acyclic formula for 13 carbon. C13 H2 times 13 plus 2. It's the only formula you're memorizing. CN H2N plus 2 is for what? It's for saturated acyclic molecules containing just C and H. Okay? So what do you have? C13 H28. Now we have to figure out what happens when we have a halogen. Well, I want to just point out, if you have a halogen, that's the same bonding as a hydrogen. Br takes place of H. Br uh, halogens take place of H. Replace halogens with Hs. So, plus two H's right there. You got it? Okay, good. So this becomes C13H13. I'm not done. <laughs> if you have a nitrogen, so a CN versus a CH. So when you went from CH to CBr, you, you, the Br took the place of an H. When you went from CH to C with an N in it, N snuck in between and brought an N with it, an H with it, didn't it? N brings an extra H into the formula. That's the take-home message. Do you want the real take-home message? Covers everything. You got you got your players. You got your C, you got your N, you got your O, you got your F, and they're columns, right? This is the periodic table. Which one of those looks closest to a zero? Because when it's in the formula, you do zero. You do nothing. You ignore it. O, action. Do nothing. We already did the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. What did I do with the halogen? Plus one. The action is this action. Action. Got it? What did I do? I added a one for bromine. That means I would add one for fluorine. I would add one for bromine. I would add one for chlorine. I would add one for iodine. Uh, what are you going to do for nitrogen? That table is easy to remember, isn't it? Everything in this column, minus one. Everything in this column, zero. Everything in this column, add one. What are you doing for the three nitrogens? Minus three H, okay? What are you doing for the O's and the S? I know what happened. It's always that question. Yeah. Theta, theta, nothing, nothing. So uh, my two actions are now summarized and I'm gonna come up with a result. I added two for the bromines and subtracted three for the uh, ends. What's my final, final, final answer for C13H subtract one H, correct? That is called the corrected formula. This was not hard, right? So now you subtract the corrected formula from the, the saturated acyclic. How many H's you got? How many H's are left over? Eight, 28 minus 10, please. Okay, IHD 
is a measure of how many pairs of hydrogen are missing from a formula. So when there are no hydrogens missing from the formula, it's C13H28. When there are nine pairs missing, it will be C13H10. Nine pairs of H's. How do you know? Because half of 18 is nine. Final answer. Pairs of H's, not single H's missing. And the only meaning of this is this. This molecule potentially has nine pi bonds or eight pi bonds in one ring, or seven pi bonds in two rings. Do you see where I'm going? Do we have to go through the whole list? Six pi bonds in three rings, five bonds in four rings, five pi bonds in four rings, four pi bonds in five rings, three pi bonds in six rings, two pi, can I stop yet? No, two pi, pi bonds in seven rings, one pi bond in eight rings, or nine rings. That's a list of all possibilities for the structure of this formula based only on index of hydrogen deficiency. It's a narrowing down exercise to figure out what your molecule is. The reason I wasn't upset we didn't get to it is because we're not going to really use it until Orgo 2. But you saw that it's not that hard. So you're not going to be that upset. Okay, and there's other IHD videos. Just watch one more and you've, you've, you've got this. Um...